You're listening to Bad Dog Agility, bringing you training tips, interviews, and news about the great sport of dog agility. I'm Jennifer. And I'm Sarah, and this is episode 228. Today's podcast is brought to you by HitItBoard.com. HitItBoard.com has the innovative training tools you need for agility. Having problems with the dog walker A-frame? The HitItBoard can fix that. Your dog doesn't like tugging? They'll love the tug it. Can't move your A-frame around by yourself? The move it can. Go to HitItBoard.com and use discount code BDA10 to get 10% off your order. That's HitItBoard.com. Today's podcast is also brought to you by 1TDC.com. Dog agility can be hard on your dog's body. Help keep their joints and muscles healthy with 1TDC. One tetradecanol complex is a clinically studied blend of unique fatty acid oils that can support your dog's joint health. One TDC promotes a healthy inflammatory response from head to tail. All of our listeners will automatically qualify for a great One TDC special offer by purchasing online at bda1tdc.com. That's bda the number one tdc.com. Today, we're going to have a little bit of a different format from usual. We are going to have four segments. We're going to talk to four different handlers that are all going to be at the Agility World Championships. And we are going to start with our very own Jennifer Crank because she is the Bad Dog Agility podcast co-host and an instructor at Bad Dog Agility. And we'll be going to Agility World Championship in the medium height class representing Team USA. So... uh, can't really welcome you since you're already on the podcast and you're, uh, you know, our normal co-host, but uh, how are you doing, Jennifer? We're, we're good. We're in the final days, like you said, uh, the final countdown. That's right. The final countdown. Um, so I wanted to ask you a little bit about your history with the Agility World Championship. You have been going for many, 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 many years. Yeah. My first Agility World Championship was in 2004 uh, in Italy. So, you know, given that we're now in 2019, yes, I've been uh, doing this over a long course of time. Now, I had some years off, so obviously wasn't on the team every year between uh, then and now. But uh, Swift is my fourth dog that I'll be taking over to the Agility World Championships. And last year was his first year. So this is his second year on the team. Last year, he got to run both team and individual and got the individual silver. And this year, we'll be returning um, as both team and individual again. So uh, headed to Finland. It's a country I haven't yet been to. So that's kind of new and exciting. But yeah, it's marking my 15th anniversary. Did I do the math right there? Of my very first uh, time at the event. Excellent. And, uh, you know, you just kind of worked in there very casually that he got the silver medal. That's a, that's a big deal. His first AWC and uh, took home the individual silver medal for the medium high class. This was last year in Sweden. And that was actually your third individual medal, correct? Yes, my third individual medal. And I do have one team medal. So my fourth AWC medal total. Awesome. And that actually makes you the uh, American handler with the most number of individual medals at the FCI Agility World Championship. Yes, I learned that from you guys when I returned home last year. It was not something that I was aware of, certainly not a goal of mine, but still pretty cool to say. That's right. Yeah, you can you can depend on us for the stats. Uh, we, we've, we've always got our finger on the statistics there. So coming off of the silver medal last year, his first AWC, what has been your focus in preparing for this year's Agility World Championship? I would say specific to this year's event, the two things that I have really focused on in preparation for AWC are uh, Swiss physical condition and and physical shape. I'm doing way more this year than I did last year. Um, He's six years old, so he's not young. He's not old. Um, But that wasn't something I did a lot last year. I just kind of relied on his youth and his speed. And this year, I'm trying to do a much better job of strengthening him, conditioning him. So that would be one thing that I've really buckled down on. The other uh, skill-related item that I've been working on is some layering and kind of some distance skills pertaining to two elements. One is a tunnel under a dog walk kind of more perpendicular to the dog walk where you need to kind of send them over and then try to get another obstacle. So you're on one side of the dog walk, they're on the other side of the dog walk and uh, asking for a performance and then also some layering with the weave poles. So 
being able to exit the weep holes and flip them away from me, but still keep the weep holes between me and the dog as I send them to an obstacle or vice versa. So specific to this year, when I've been studying the courses and looking at the judging, there seems to be some greater distance elements than I've seen in the past. And that's not something that I did a lot of training for prior to this point. So that's been something that since making the team in May, and certainly since our first team practice, that I've really put a strong focus on with Swift. Awesome. Well, I will be there live watching you and cheering you on. And Savan will be watching on the live stream, cheering you on as well. Uh, and uh, look forward to seeing how you and Swift do this year. Yes, we have the, uh, the bar has been set high last year and we will do our absolute best to try to repeat or try to perform even better. All right. Good luck. All right, now I am joined by Tobias Wust, part of Team Germany, who will be at the Agility World Championship running his Schulte Dorty. I think I've I've got that reasonably right. Is that right? Yes, Dörte. It's right. Dörte. Okay. And Tobias uh, has a uh, a distinguished career in the Agility World Championship. Tobias, tell us about your experience um, at this show, at the Agility World Championship. Uh, you've taken gold multiple times with multiple dogs, I believe. Yes, that's right. Last year I um, got the vice title and the year before I won with Dörte, the world championship and with uh, Dörte's mother. I think I won one time and one time I um, got the vice title also and a lot of um, team titles in small and also in large. Amazing. And then since we were uh, with you last year at the Agility World Championship, um, you are just coming off of the European Open win. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, European Open this year was um, yeah my uh, last uh, success this year. And it was one of my um, biggest goal that I had with Dörte because the year before I had not so um, good luck on the European Open. And the year before in Italy, I had, uh, I think it was the first European Open for Dörte. She was um, just two years old and she um, got in Italy the second place. Yes. And this year it was, yeah, super good for me because it was one of my goal to win the European Open. And um, now I can um, say that I have won everything with her. So I'm super uh, satisfied. I think, yeah, it's perfect. It's good. <laughs> Wonderful. So you've already had so much success with uh, this dog, with Dorte, and just coming off the European Open win, after last year's event, I mean, you've already won gold and then you won silver. Is there anything specifically that you have been working on over the last year to prepare for this event? Yeah, I tried to train um, regularly with uh, Dorte because I sometimes a little bit too um, lazy and I have not so much time for my dogs. But I uh, tried to do the last year to train um, yeah, regularly. Um, and the uh, uh, most important training goal was uh, to get more um, uh, consistently in the speed. Mm -hmm. I think this is one of the... I can, I can run with her a lot of clear runs. That is not my problems. I, when I look at my working book, I have, I think... See a clear run, clear run, clear run, clear run, clear run, but sometimes it's too different um, with the speed. Right. Yes, and one of my um, um, training goals this year to train on the speed, to consistently on speed. So yeah. I think a lot of people would be interested in what you would do if your goal is just to speed up the dog. It's not really skill work at that point. So can you give us like one little trick or tip or hint on uh, things that you're doing to draw out that speed? I think a lot of people ask me all the time, what is your secret? What is the secret? Um, I think I have no uh, secret. I, um, my dogs live with me. My dogs are family dogs. They live with us in the house. They go with us in, um, uh, in the holidays, running on the beach. Um, I think for the dogs, it's important that they um, have a normal dog life, go for a walk, uh, do nothing. They can play, they can lay in the sun like this. Um, yeah, and then, of course, the training is also super important. Um, yeah, and when I want to train on the speed, then I train not so difficult um, exercise because more easy exercise that she can build up more and more speed. 
Yeah, and I, I think it's also the uh, food is super important and that the dog is healthy. Um, this was also one um, uh, in the past a little bit a problem with Dörte that she is not so super healthy because with food she has um, all allergies. Allergies, yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. have, uh, the best food. And um, I give her also Gladiator. I like it. I think it's for her, it's super, super, super good. When I see her, she looks like I'm happy and she looks healthy. And she goes also to physiotherapy. I don't know the English word. It's um, uh, underwater. Oh, like a treadmill. Underwater yes. treadmill, yeah. Yes, yes. Um, one time in a week. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think um, regular retraining is also important. Right. So one so time in a week, it's super good. When I have time, then I train uh, two times. And when i motivated, then I train two times. But I tried in the last year, one time in a week. Definitely, you have to do. Okay, when holiday, then not, but yeah. Right, right. Awesome. All right, well, uh, congratulations on the European Open win and good luck. At the moment, I have to say that my feeling is with Dörte that um, uh, we are together stronger than ever before. Oh, well, that is a high bar, so we super. will look forward. Yeah, she's super fast. I start not so much uh, competitions, but um, the last two, she was super 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 good and i think yeah uh, faster than uh, last year on the world championship i hope in nine days she's also super fast then <laughs> it can be work <laughs> perfect all right well thank you so much and good luck at the championships thank you now i'm joined by three-time national agility champion sarah baker welcome to the podcast sarah thank you i'm happy to be here so this year is your first time at the Agility World Championship. Yes, it is. And last year you were an alternate on the team. So part of the team, but you uh, did not make the trip and compete. So this year you're um, competing in both the team and the individual. Yes, I was, I was so pleased to hear that when they announced that I get to do both runs or all four runs. Awesome. And so when we think about the past year and what's been going on with you and Hops, uh, I think the big highlight would be that third National Agility Championship. Actually, it's making the team. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> that has been my, my goal for 10 years is to make this team and run at the World Championships. So while winning the third time was absolutely amazing, making the team trumps that for me. Awesome. All right. And so now you're getting ready to go. So tell us a little bit about what you've been doing to get ready for this event, especially since it's your first time. Well, there, uh, we've been studying the judges courses and there are a couple of skills that Hops and I needed to polish up. One of them was being able to leave throttles. So not your traditional like 180 setup where your dog has to pull in that that tight gap but where i'm running away from the jump and i need to pull him to the backside he likes to come with me so that is a skill that we've really worked on him being able to turn away from me and take that jump as i'm leaving and then one of the judges really likes to have a jump near the weave poles and you're not supposed to take the jump you're supposed to go to the weave poles so we've been working on being able to send past obstacles to the poles Awesome. All right. And so now you are getting ready. Um, since it is your first time, what are you doing mentally at the event? I mean, you've won three national agility championships and I've seen you in person and, and uh, you're pretty, uh, uh, have steady nerves, uh, very focused, but tell the podcast listeners a little bit about what you do to keep that focus at an event like this. Well, I, I will be honest, this one makes me a little bit more nervous than the, the Nationals because I've, I've wanted it for so long. Um, but I'm going to do what I, what I normally do, which is try to focus on the courses and visualize the course over and over again and try not to let the nerves get to me. Awesome. All right. Well, good luck. Thank you so much. Now I'm joined by Canada's Jessica Patterson. Welcome to the podcast, Jessica. Hi, thanks for having me. So uh, this is not your first AWC, your first Agility World Championship. Um, how many times have you been to the Agility World Championship? What's your uh, history there? That's actually a really good question. <laughs> um, I think I was five times with tricks, and I guess this will be my second time uh, 
going with Lux. Right. And so Lux is your young dog and he's the only dog you're going with this year? Correct. Yes. Uh, Trixie's last year was, uh, yeah, it was last year. Okay. And um, I recall from last year that in his first AWC, Lux got a second place in jumping, showing that uh, he's definitely got the speed to be competitive at, in that venue. Yes, uh, she did. I was really, really happy with that run. Um, and she was second in individual jumping. That's correct. Fabulous. So um, what has been going on with you and Lux in the past year in terms of trials? I've seen a recent uh, trial, the Canadian UKI Open, that seemed to go pretty well for you guys. Yeah, it was great. Uh, to be honest, I, I went as a bit of a warm up for AWC. I knew that uh, just because of the judges that the courses would be really great and kind of what I was looking to uh, practice before heading to AWC. And also that they was on turf. So I knew the footing would be the same um, as I would be seeing at uh, World Championships. And like I said, I knew the courses would be very tricky just by the judges that were there. And I, I knew I wanted to get her kind of in the ring um, once more before AWC to work out a couple of bugs. And uh, it was a great opportunity to do that for sure. And then how did you come away from that? Great. She had a fantastic weekend. I was really, really happy with her. We, um, we won biathlon overall and we won the Canadian Open final overall as well. Well, that's a very good warm up. Um, bodes well for the coming show. Um, so coming off of last year, it being her first or sorry, yeah, her first, her first yes. AWC. Um, what did you come away and think that you needed to work on over the, the next year? And what have you been working on this past year to get ready? Uh, that's a really good question. I, I definitely noticed last year that the courses were starting to change a little bit. Um, definitely more spread out, more distance between obstacles. Um, so something that I've really been working on is just distance and commitment this year. Uh, really, really strong, strong commitment that I can really, really trust. And um, courses that are definitely a little bit more spread out, a little bit more wide open, I guess. All right. And so we will keep an eye on you guys uh, and see how you do. Absolutely. Yes. <laughs> All right. Thanks for joining us. All right. So thanks again to our podcast guests for this episode, Jennifer, Jessica, Tobias, and Sarah. We wish you all good luck. And if you would like to follow these four handlers at the Agility World Championship, you can register for the Agility World Championship Experience online course, where we will have all of the runs from Jennifer, Jessica, Tobias, and Sarah, along with their own analysis of these runs, where they tell, walk you through the course, tell you what their plan was, how the execution went, go through any mistakes, what went well, what went wrong. Um, and we do this in as close to real time as we can. Uh, that online course, you can get to that at baddogagility.com slash AWC. There will also be a link in the show notes page. And um, you can register for just $39 uh, to learn from all four handlers. We'd also like to thank our sponsors for this episode. Hititboard.com, Elite Science, and also NTI Global. Accessories on the go. Compress that tunnel for storage or carrying with an NTI Global Tunnel Leash, now in stock. Add those tamer bags to your tunnel and keep it weighted and in place. Hold equipment steady with some anchor bags. Visit shop.ntiglobal.com for the widest selection of dog agility tunnels for both competition and backyard training. Known for free shipping, more options, high-quality products, and low prices, NTI Global has got you covered. They also offer a full line of accessories and agility storage solutions. Need your agility gear in a hurry? Don't forget to check the in-stock selection. Visit shop.ntiglobal.com and use promo code NTI19STORAGE for 5% savings off today. Promo code good through September 30th, 2019. Happy training!